Has anybody been through any tough times? You really don't get out of this life without lots of tough times. You always either are starting a crisis, in the middle of a crisis, coming out of a crisis, or somebody you know and love is going through a crisis, coming out of a crisis, about to go into another crisis. There's always something going on. And especially if you're a woman, we feel like we have to save the world. We have that nurturing spirit that God gave us. And he does say with the heart of the household, whether you're 12, whether you're 6, whether you're 96 or 106, we never lose that. We want to help. And so do men. But as women, we have that mother instinct. So things hit us hard. So I've been through a few things when I was 15. My dad was murdered. You all remember that from yesterday. Nothing I could control. I love there's a you know, saying, you know, God, give me the serenity prayer to handle, you know, let go of the things I can't handle. A lot of people tell me that God's their co-pilot. Have we God is their co-pilot? Who's the pilot? He's the pilot. Amen. Thank you. I don't want to be piloting this sheep. I want God to pilot it. So I just let him do what he's going to do. Because I know God does not give you bad times. Y'all, you know, I know this is the, the church where you all are sitting on the pew and you all have a Bible and have read the Bible and keep reading it because it's living. And what you read today will be different than what you read yesterday because God opens it up to you. And God's very clear. One, he never gives you more than you can handle. Now, I know you're going to question him many, many times. Because I did. When my mom died, I questioned that. Like, okay, Lord, I could handle the murder of my dad because I wasn't as close to him. As horrific as that was, having your dad murdered by the mafia when you're 15 years old. I still didn't see him as much. I spent every waking hour with my mother. So when that day happened, that crushed me to the soul. And I cried uncontrollably for two years before I could even process that. But I knew in my spirit, God promised me that it's not more than I can handle. I was talking yesterday about, I know women that have lost children in horrific ways. And you think, oh my gosh, how can there be a God that lets that happen? There's always a reason. Now let me be clear with this too. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. When they say, oh, you know, Mother Nature and, it, and it's God's hurricanes, and, and it's not, God does not give us bad things. He allows things to happen so we can grow. And sometimes those are great things, and sometimes they're not so great things. But it's just like when we like, teach a lot to women, and when you put that tea bag in the hot water, what happens to the tea? It gets stronger, and we hate it. I don't never pray for patience. I'll just give you that tip right now. Never pray for patience, because what happens when you pray for patience? You get tribulation. And I don't think anybody's need to pray for that, because you're going to get it anyway. It's just how you go through it. So when I was a teenager, I was not titled Christian. My dad was a Protestant, never went to church. My mom was a Catholic, and she had had a bad experience when she was little, back in the 40s where she was very abused by some, some nuns that unfortunately gave it a bad name, although she was Catholic. So they didn't want their kids to grow up with any structure on that. They were going to find our own way. And you know what? When God wants to find you, he knows exactly where you are. And he's going to find you. And he always had a hold on me. My, my grandmother was very Catholic. And she had that, that faith that kept feeding into me. And I knew there was a God. But didn't have the structure or go to church or anything like that. I was born and raised in New York City. So my dad died. I knew, I prayed, and I said, okay, this stinks, but I know there's, there's more to life. There's, I, can, I can get through this, but I was not Christian yet. I didn't have that strong walk with God. So fast forward, one night, I'm living in St. Pete, Florida, and I'm working in a house fall, and I'm about 22 years old, far from living a Christian life, in college, I was in theater, I was in musical comedy, I was singing, I was dancing, I was in the fast lane in show business. That's what I did. I did TV, show business, my mom was a model, so I loved entertaining. I was a professional white face clown, so I loved kids, and I was, just loved just being on the stage and helping people, making people laugh, but not walking a Christian life. Didn't know there was a Christian life. I thought everybody was Christian. I thought you just, you know, God's here, you live, you die. Everybody goes to heaven except for bad people that murder people. But that was like, you know, makes sense. Didn't know there was more than that. So I'm sitting in the inn, it's like 10 o'clock at night, I'm working at house ball. And I had slipped the disc in my back. So that night, it was really hurting me. It was hurting me so bad that I was sitting trying to do the books, and I was crying. And in walks 
Not a pastor, not a priest, not a man with a three-piece suit on. The janitor walks in. God uses so many different ways. And if you let him do it, it's amazing. He can use children. He's used donkeys in the Bible. Remember that one? Okay. This janitor comes up to me, and I see him every night when I close up. He comes and he cleans the spa. And he saw me crying. And he goes, oh my gosh, what's wrong? And I said, my back is killing me. And I know I said, I have a slip disc, and it's really hurting. And he goes, oh, I know something that can help you. I literally got out a pen and paper to write down the name of the doctor or the chiropractor. And he goes, no, come here. And actually he came over to me. And he laid hands on me for the first time. Somebody prayed for me. He said, Jesus can heal you. And I'm, I'm from New York. We don't talk like that. Just come. Those are the crazy people. My mom didn't want to watch out for those people. So I'm like, okay, but I love God. So I was open. At this point, I'm in pain. It's funny how God can get your attention. When he prayed for me, immediately I was relieved from pain. And I'm going to fast forward for a second. 16 years later, when I've been walking with the Lord for 16 years, full of faith, and read the Bible, cover to cover, and keep reading it, don't stop, and have seen God do miracles and wonderful things. And at that moment, I'm going to pray for something, and I'm not going to get it instantly. But that night, I got instant healing. Do we get it every time? No. God's not a magic bullet. He's not Santa Claus. But he says to pray for it as if it's going to happen right now. Pray in faith, believing. Because we know God can do it. So that night, I had no faith. And God did it. You know what happened that night? I gave my heart to the Lord. Because he got my attention. And he knew that night he needed my attention. Because it was going to change my life forever. So I went on to be a Christian. Walk with the Lord. Found out, wow, the Bible's real. You know, because I was taught, you know, read the Bible. Men, priests, I'll read the Bible. They'll read it to you when you need it. Sundays, you know, Easter and Christmas. Check. So much more. It opened up a whole world. And I was this newborn Christian. And I went around telling everybody about Jesus and the Bible. And, and how he healed me. And it was great. And you know what happened? People didn't believe me. My own mom didn't believe me. I cried a lot. Because I'm like, Lord, people don't believe. I thought they just didn't know. And I was going to enlighten them. Doesn't always happen, but that's okay. Because God doesn't say Christian life is going to be easy. It's not. But it's so much more fun when you have that joy that passes all understanding. So it doesn't matter what's happening. You know you're going to be okay. Because whatever happens, you have a purpose and a legacy to live. And if you're willing to live it out, it's a good thing. So I went on to marry a pastor's son, thinking everything was going to be great. Ended up that became a very abusive relationship. And I always tell people, God does not have grandkids. You're either his child and you live the Christian life because God says he'll know you by, you'll know them by their fruits. Not by, oh, your sister's a really cool person. Or your parents, they go to church, so you don't have to. You have to walk in yourself. Because nobody's going to stand in front of the pearly gates but you, not your pastor, not your parents. And so he wasn't walking a godly life. He was cursing at me every day. He was staying home from church, drinking beer. He was, you know, a pastor's son, but totally not working. He read the Bible cover to cover. He was Greek, ready to Greek. you think that would do it? Don't. So very, very mean. But I had a daughter, and I knew I was unequally yoked at that time. Seven years of abuse. Only got one black eye. But I've learned since then, that's one black eye too many. But the verbal abuse stuck with me for years and years. It still creeps up now and then. So I hate that. But I do love that I got the strength and the faith to leave. When I realized I did want to be a Christian woman, I knew that I wanted to honor my vows. I did not want to get a divorce. But when it came to the day that I went into my closet, this walk-in closet, and I prayed, Lord, I'd rather be alone with you and my daughter than be cursed at every day and made to cry. So again, back to the psalm when God stops in, stops, when God steps in. God stepped in when I was 22 and got my attention. Started walking with him, thinking life would be perfect and a picket fence, and I married a pastor and son, so life was going to be grand. But through the tough times, my legacy is going to begin. I ended up escaping safely, and I help other women do the same if they need to. I also help young women avoid domestic
domestic violence because there were signs I didn't see that I could have avoided that situation. So I'm able to say, okay, Lord, been through that, got the t-shirt for that, now I'm going to turn around and help others. And that's my plan in life. No matter what happens to me, I'm going to vow to God, I will use it to help others. So it's okay, Lord. Bad things can happen, that's all right, because you and me will do this together. Because I promise you I'm going to turn around and help, help people through it. So now I've had a, a murder of my dad, I can help people been through that, been through domestic violence, I help them go through that. Now I'm going to marry my Prince Charming. God brought a wonderful man into my life. Prince Charming never cursed at me. He was a wonderful Baptist boy. Lovely, wonderful. I went from Pentecostal to Baptist. So he just entitles me nothing. Yes. Just going to tell you that right now. God's not going to ask for your ID when you get to heaven. He's going to look at your heart look at your life. Be surprised when people will be there. You're thinking, ooh, they made it in. They went to the other church. Lots of people up there. So fun. And so my Prince Charming husband now, Here's where the faith, faith comes in. That day that I was instantly healed. Now come to find out my brother has cancer. It was, it was Hodgkin's. He had chemo. He was cured. Then uh, my mom got cancer right before that. And my mom died of cancer. Right? A week before her 59th birthday. Because she was a smoker. Died of liver and lung cancer. And then just about a year or two later, I get diagnosed with cancer. And here's where my message, my, my, hopefully the message I'll take with this. Now, I've been walking with the Lord 16 years, married to my Prince Charming, active in church, children, teacher, love the Lord. I've seen him do great things. Now I get cancer. Okay, God healed me before. We got this. Just pray and it'll happen again. But this time God needed my attention in a different way. He didn't need to stop me in my tracks. He needed my life to take on a different direction. So here I am. They wake me up from surgery. And they had removed. They went into exploratory. They knew I had cancer. They didn't know what kinds. And then opened up my chest, cracked me open, and find out what was in there. And when they did, I woke up with tubes coming out of me. And the doctor said, we had to remove half of both your lungs, your thymus gland, the lining around your heart, disconnect half your diaphragm, and we had to remove the left thoracic nerve to vocal cord, and you'll never speak again above a faint whisper. It's impossible. Don't you love doctors? It's impossible. Well, God knows if that means I'm possible. We all know that. So I love impossible, because I mean God could do something really cool, and it's going to get somebody else's attention, like he got mine when I was 22. So I remember looking up at him, and I said, is it going to make any better than this? He said, no, that's actually good. Have a nice day. Chemo, you'll be fine. So, part of a wonderful Pentecostal church, everybody praying for me. Their pastors with me. They are praying. They're not just praying for me. Like, you know, people say, I'll pray for you. You really wonder if they do. These were people that were on their knees, praying, claiming my victory, claiming restoration, total restoration. These women, people had so much faith. And I had it right along with them.
now you've got a plan because you promised me you're my pilot and everything good will come from anything bad if we let it. So I have faith and I have great faith. So I, I just love to give people faith. Have faith now when you don't, you're not going through something big because when something big happens it's so much easier when you have a lot of faith. You know God can do it even if you don't understand it. You can be joyful and people really question you. How can you be so joyful? You've got cancer. You can't talk. It's all right. God's got a plan. And I really felt that way. And we really had a good time through my chemo. We were talking to nurses. I wasn't talking, but I was sign language. <laughs> but we were ministering to them. We were making new friends. My, my doctor was great. So really, I just knew God had a plan. So about two years later, it starts coming back. And now the 700 Club gets a hold of my story. And they do my story on the 700 Club. Because they looked into my medical chart. Because they don't take a miracle like that. I don't know if you know that or not. They have to prove that other people went through this and didn't get the same outcome. Because we don't need any fake testimonies for God. He's going to do it the right way. So they looked into it for about six months and realized there's a lot of other people out there that had the same surgery. And they're not talking. And you're talking. They brought the camera crew over to my house. They did. You can look it up. 700 Club or Ray McGarry. And I love it because it gives people hope. My husband's on it too, and it's really neat. Did I get an instant healing? No. Did I get healed? Yes. Am I singing? No. Is my life different? Yes. Is it amazing? Yes. Because guess what? I would not be here talking to you or to the millions of people I talk to all the time on radio, TV, and events. If God had just healed me like this, it would have been a different testimonial. But I like this one better. Because I like giving people hope if you're not getting that instant gratification. We're also microwave ready. It has to be now, or it has to be now, or I'm not going to believe you. I love that it took time and nurturing. And we had a walk in our faith. That is such a cool testimony. So I love letting people know next time you're wondering if God hears you or hears your prayer. Is he, is he listening? So I hope you remember that because later on, Without a voice, without a vocal cord nerve, I won an Emmy for having a TV talk show, and I'm not supposed to be able to speak. And I was 48 years old. I wasn't a young, pretty little 21-year-old either. So it's never too late to have your dreams come true and God to do a miracle in your life. And it's not over until the day you come to see the Lord. So God's not finished with you. So whatever you're thinking you want to do for the Lord, go do it. You have everything you need right now, exactly the way you are to fulfill God's perfect will